It's okay to fully revamp and change up a game or make a lot of changes to a game when every installment is essentially its own entity. Like the only thing that the new installments have in common with the old installments is its main title. Yeah, I know what I mean. Like Call of Duty and Far Cry. The installments in these series were basically standalone games with the exceptions of a few that they decided to connect in Call of Duty. And Far Cry is literally just the same game pretty much over and over again in different locations. Like there's a dictator you gotta kill. Uh, figure it out. The point is, if Call of Duty and Far Cry were water, Assassin's Creed is fire. Which probably explains why you died if you tried to go swimming in the first AC. Tiny, tiny fucking piece of shit part of the fucking game. The identity of Assassin's Creed to me was a combination of Uncharted, The Last of Us, and GTA. With a hint of The Witcher so. and the traversing of Prince of Persia. In other words, it was a third person action adventure game that was story driven in an open world with some old ass dialogue. Now I know right now y'all are probably like, AYG, not every Assassin's Creed took place in the same time period with the same characters. How can you compare it to The Last of Us? And to which I would say, this is true. But first we must remember a few key points when discussing the Assassin's Creed franchise. One, the worlds we play through in the games are not real worlds. They're a series of memories that we access by way of the animus. Memories that were supposed to be deeply woven into the DNA of Desmond. Y'all forgot about Desmond because they killed him in Assassin's Creed 3. But all of the ancestors you play as from Assassin's Creed 1 to Assassin's Creed 4, which is the first six installments in the Assassin's Creed series, were directly related to Desmond. You play as Altair Ibn La'ahad for the first game. Then you play as Ezio Auditore de Firenze for the next three games. Then you play for Connor Kenway or Roton Hageton. I think that's how you say that shit. For Assassin's Creed 3. Then for Assassin's Creed 4, you play as Edward Kenway. Now, in case y'all didn't know or didn't remember, Edward Kenway, who you play as for the duration of Assassin's Creed 4, was the father of Haytham Kenway, who you play as at the beginning of Assassin's Creed 3, until you play as his son, Connor Kenway, for the rest of the game. So Edward Kenway is Connor Kenway's grandfather. Or just Connor, because he definitely didn't take on Haytham's last name. As a matter of fact, he killed that nigga because of a conflict of interest. One was a Templar and wanted to enslave everyone, and one was an assassin and wanted to shut that shit down. And if you're wondering why Connor is brown and looks like this, it's because Haytham knocked up a Native American woman in then left oh shit never mind it just dawned on me why he really killed him hashtag daddy issues now i remember when i said for the first six games you play as ancestors of desmond miles well i lied for the first eight games you play as ancestors of desmond miles the difference between the first five and the next three is that you actually get to play as desmond miles outside of the animus it's not until black flag which is the sixth game in the series that you no longer play as desmond now from black flag to syndicate they just refer to desmond miles as subject 17 and the only people left from the og team were sean hastings and rebecca crane now let's backtrack to the end of assassin's creed 3 real quick because this is where ubisoft fucked up you know how you know they fucked up and you know how you know they know they fucked up because four games later, they gave us Ava, who basically just took the place of Desmond. Killing off Desmond with some bullshit. It was like in Death Note when they clapped L. Killing these characters makes it so the story loses so much substance. I mean, these brothers are supposed to be the one, like Neo in the Matrix. Killing them off should have ended the story, like Neo in the Matrix. Now, don't get me wrong, I have nothing against Layla Hassan. As a matter of fact, she is a likable character. My only point was that you wouldn't have to replace one likable character with another likable character if you didn't kill off that first likable character. And the truth is, it doesn't extremely mess up the story by any way shape or form they could have picked a bunch of people from this vast pool of assassins descendants but jump around if you must i understand but the moral of the story is assassin's creed has kind of lost its identity a little bit now that doesn't mean i don't love assassin's creed anymore or anything like that after all i'm married to the franchise and you don't stop loving your wife just because she's changed over time i'm sure i've changed too practically every game from one through origins asks why we don't do anything anymore or at least why i don't take them out anymore and to what I say it's not me, it's you, Ubisoft. Now for those of y'all who are like, but bro, Assassin's Creed 1 through Black Flag were basically the same game. I would just have to say, I kind of disagree. Assassin's Creed Black Flag added the naval aspect, four guns and two swords. That was actually a good enough change, at least for me. It was fun, it made it so that the free flowing combat had to have some changes and the naval combat was its own separate entity. Not to mention, it was in the Caribbean, which was kind of lit. Brotherhood added chain kill streaks and made it so you could call the squad. Revelations added the hook blade and kept the chain kills and gang activity. AC3 added pass throughs and AC2 had the most changes from a previous installment to the next installment. Well, with the dying of clothes, selecting your weapons of choice, obtaining a pistol, the double hidden blades, and being able to disarm your opponent, 
it felt like they just built off of what worked in AC2 and applied it to other games but it is fair to say that there weren't a ton of changes after that until Syndicate to Origin and by 2016 and 2017 when Assassin's Creed Unity and Syndicate came out I definitely feel like it didn't feel like the exact same game we had been playing from 2007 to 2013. The mechanics for the fighting in Unity which was only just added upon and made better in Syndicate was definitely much different. In Assassin's Creed 1 you could just mess around with a bunch of guards have 15 of them follow you and you would just fight them easily because you would just wait for them to swing and then you would just counter. Whereas in Assassin's Creed Unity and Syndicate by this point you had to think some more because now you had a parry system where it was like I have to make sure that I parry at the right time or I will die because if y'all don't remember for the first five to eight memory blocks you could die pretty easily because you couldn't get the thicker or thicker skin upgrade which increased your health until you got through those memory blocks. Not to mention you probably couldn't afford a good enough weapon so you were hit. Now what they also added which I thought was pretty dope was you're planning for your assassination target so you could find out where your distraction opportunities were and where your access to the buildings were and if you got in the right position you could get a cutscene when you got that assassination if you did it in the right place. Like in one of them you could kill somebody from a confessions booth. Now that's sinning but it was still a cool cutscene. Oh my god that is so cool. In the syndicate, you had the same situation going on with your first assassination. You basically pretended to be a dead guy or took the place of a dead corpse to get inside next to your assassination target who was like some kind of doctor or something. And then you killed him and got that cutscene. So it was basically the same thing as Unity, but it was more polished. Just like the fightings and mechanics and everything else you expect to get better from one game to the next game. Now don't get me wrong, I'd be lying if I said the old games didn't get somewhat repetitive. Earlier I was just saying I didn't think they were the same exact game, but they definitely did get a little bit repetitive and there's nothing wrong with making changes to a game that's been around for 13 years with this many damn installments. All I'm saying is that by the time we got to Unity and Syndicate, it still felt like an Assassin's Creed game. They just felt like updated versions of an old game that we grew to love, whereas now it feels like for Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla that it's a completely new game slash series entirely. It feels like not the story isn't necessarily necessarily secondary but it feels like it's more of a rpg that just happens to have the assassin's creed main title on it like come on son i heard that in valhalla eivor isn't even an assassin like at that point you might as well change the name completely the adventures of eivor eivor a viking's tale the trials and tribulations of eivor the viking i also heard their fighting templars were side missions like you know what i mean what game is this really? <laughs> now I assume the Eivor in some way shape or form is related to some Assassin's Bloodline because what happened to Eivor in the Valhalla cinematic trailer is parallel to what happened to Ezio in the Revelation cinematic trailer. The difference is Altair came before Ezio. Now we don't know who this dude is but he sure resembles Ezio and if that is my homie then Eivor is a force because he can see into the future. Color of hockey is on a million. Now think about the last three ACs. Assassin's Creed Origins, which I did thoroughly enjoy, Odyssey, and now Valhalla are all essentially kind of the same game. So I am curious to see if we're going to run into the same issue that we did previously. The only difference between Valhalla and Odyssey than Origins is that they added some choices, which is kind of cool and seems to be a way that a lot of developers are going. With all that being said, it feels like Ubisoft handed over our Assassin's Creed identity to Sucker Punch and Ghost of Tsushima, which is not a shot at all at Ghost of Tsushima. Ghost of Tsushima, to me, could easily be game of the year it was very fun but more of this video if we can get an assassin's creed game that combines the new traversing and rpg mechanics of the last three acs the beauty of ghost of tsushima and the original story of the early assassin's creed games which started a centuries old war between the assassins and templars we bring my nigga desmond back with lucy team them up with sean rebecca and layla hassan we could have the best ac game of all time no both i'm not really gonna bring up the sci-fi aspect because that's for another day and video but only time will tell what kind of ac games we get in the future so We'll just have to wait and see.